Growing up, my dad wasn't in the picture. As a kid, I always yearned for a father figure. Now that Force is older, I want to make sure he gets my input. <laughs> Even when he doesn't want it. So why don't you pull up a chair and join our fireside chat? Test, test. There we go. Go ahead. Test, test. Perfect. All right, ready? Yep. Three, two, one, and we're live. Another fireside chat with Force. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Good, got to have some Paula's donuts for breakfast. Yeah. Yeah, all right, I'll take these out of the shot now. It's kind of like taking up all our space. Uh, how was breakfast? Paula's donuts are so big that they need a... Too much area to even fit on them. Our desk? Desk, yeah. yeah. We pretty much need a bigger desk. Yeah. Especially when Mr. Ray comes back and Mr. Ray ever comes back. How you been? Good. I see you changed your wardrobe for the new uh, video podcast. Yeah, I was wearing a, like a neon pink, so I decided to not wear that for the podcast. Mom thinks that's your best color. You look good in it. Uh, I, I have a baby pink shirt, and I think I honestly look better than that. <laughs> neon pink is kind of a... Not so great color, in my opinion. Yeah. So what's been going on, man? You look like a grown-up now. I mean, it's only been like two weeks since we did last time, but you sound more manly in the headset, at least. I guess I'm... Well, I'm at, I'm at an age where it's kind of a transition period into, you know, physically becoming more of a grown-up. Yeah. It might also be because I'm a little more groggy than last time. <laughs> that could also be possible. Dude, it's 1.45 in the afternoon. <laughs> I know. What time did you wake up today? I woke up like 11.30. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I already did 100 push-ups and I went to Paula's, brought to Paula's back. It's the weekend and I finally, you know, school's finally winding down. Uh, I think the last day has either already happened or coming up soon. It's <laughs> a bit of a point of contention sometimes. Why, why does mom think school ends at the end of the week and you think it already ended? Well, the 12th, so my Chinese teacher ended her ended like handing in work on the twelfth, but our principal said the seventeenth. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of like minuscule differences between the high school and the middle school. Right. And I'm sure some teachers probably just ended last Friday so they can put the grades in mm -hmm. in time instead of you know being rushed since they're also at home, and it's probably harder to sift through all the online work than you know the in person work. Right. So at the time of filming, this is uh, the fourteenth. Mm -hmm. So that would make it, what, Tuesday when school? No, the 17th, Wednesday. you said? Yeah, Wednesday, jeez. Yeah. So either way, this week, uh, mm -hmm. it's over, huh? Yeah. Are you going to graduate? Yeah. I mean, all this all this stuff counts as extra credit, and I'm passing all my classes, and I'm passing all my classes where I need to pass with a higher grade to be promoted, so... To be promoted, so... Promoted? Yeah. Well, if you have under an 86, you don't get to go to the next... So, like, for Chinese, for example... I need an 85 and an 86 on the test and, you know, in the class or vice versa for just Chinese to be promoted to Chinese too or else I'm stuck in Chinese again. Uh, and that's different from the 65 passing grade, which means you passed. So if, so say you get a 70 in Chinese, you pass Chinese, but you don't get promoted because you didn't get like... You don't have a deep enough grasp of it. Yeah. Because, like, they say, like, 85 is mastery, which, I mean, I can kind of see, but I also can't really see. Because if, like, if there's not a lot of assignments and, like, a kid bombs, like, if there's not a lot of assignments, like, for classwork and for homework, and then a kid bombs a test, I mean, yeah, kind of sucks for them. That does suck. How are they doing tests now? Uh, we're not having regents or anything, so as long as you have over an 86, I'm pretty sure you're being promoted. But for, like, the Chinese test, is it, like, written, or do you, like, speak? Uh, so there's some things that you have to write and some things that you have to say. I don't really know because I didn't take it, so... Oh, they just, uh, whatever? You're just gonna get moved on? Because they, they give it, they outsource it to somebody else. Like, there's no one publisher for every test. Like, there's different publishers for every test or something, so... Sometimes it doesn't even really match up with what we're being taught in Chinese. So that's why if I was still in school, like, we'd really be drilling on stuff and, you know, preparing for the test rather than continuing on with what we're doing because the test is, like, the test involves different things that we either haven't learned yet or, you know, we need some review on, so. Right. I, yeah, that makes sense, I guess. But it's just so hard with no, uh, no real testing. 
Yeah, with no real testing this year, I mean, if you have an 86, you're pretty much promoted. Although, one thing that they did do for math is your teacher decides if you get promoted or not, which I think is kind of stupid, because if you have a bad teacher that, like, doesn't like you, they can pretty much just gatekeep you, and you can appeal it, but, like, if your student has, like, and is at an 86, like, I'm sure the teacher can make a pretty strong case for them to, or pretty, well, it wouldn't be a strong case, because it would be pretty, you know, it wouldn't, it's hard to say without swearing, but <laughs> they can come up with a bad reason to just keep somebody, you know, out of there. You can tell he's a teenager now. Yeah, they can, they can just make up a reason for, you know, the student to not get promoted, and since they're, like, right on the line, they can just gatekeep students that they don't really like. So I, I was kind of worried when that was enacted because, like, it becomes subjective rather than objective, which means, like, a teacher can just say, yeah, you're not getting promoted even though you, you know, meet all the requirements that you would need to meet. Right. That's tough, especially since you struggle with math and a teacher this year, too. Right, but I did so much extra credit. Like, I think I have over 100 maybe in that class <laughs> because everything counts as extra credit. So, in science, like, I have a DBA that's, like, 24 out of zero, which means it's just, like, a free 24 points in the classwork part of the grade. So, it, this year was kind of broken, and they didn't, they never really got their stuff together. Like, there's a, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's already been a lot of stuff that's been going on this year during the coronavirus and, you know, with the George Floyd protests and everything. Um... So I guess it'd be hard for them to get their stuff together because they don't really have the funding or, like, the, the attention that they would really need to, you know, get what they need to get their stuff together. So I don't really blame them, but it would have been nice if, you know, there was a better way for school at home to be done. Yeah, it's just such a... Um... I almost swear to there right there, right there too. You can swear. Yeah, it's so, it was so discombobulated, but it had it happened so quick that they didn't really have time to set it up. It's not like they right. prepared to do it. They, they, they had, were just doing it. They had March through June, which I think gives them enough time to at least figure out a way to, you know, have an objective way of promoting students and stuff. Like the things that the things that I wish were just done were just like some slight logistics and like. Uh, you know, an objective way to pass and some quality of life stuff that just made it easier for students and made it easier to understand what was really going on. And if we do have school at home next year, or for part of the next semester, I really hope that they have a better just system of, you know, having work and lessons. But I, I, I quickly realized that that wasn't going to happen for us this year. But if we have to go do this again next semester, I, I would hope that there would be a bit of a better system going on. Right, it would be a lot tougher too because there won't be parents at home making sure for us that are doing their homework. Yeah, because I'm... Schools might be closed longer than actual workplaces. So there might be parents who have gone back to work and, you know, students are at home. So it's going to be harder for them to create a regimented process, but... I just wish that more teachers would just do online lectures, if anything. Like, uh, I wish at least I could listen to a lecture instead of having to, you know, read a textbook because I think as you grow older, lectures become more and more important to understanding what's going on, especially when you have a teacher that's really good and you need to... Um, Did you just look at yourself and get distracted? No, there was a notification on your phone oh. and I saw the white and I thought the camera was freaking out. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure everything's working, okay? I am the YouTube guy after all. Yeah, correct, correct. But, uh, yeah, I just wish more teachers would do online conferences. Which, you know, hopefully if we have to go back to school at home. Conferences or like lectures? Because that's different. Conferences basically entail... the conf All the conferences that I've been to have been basically a lecture. Um, and then, you know, questions along the way. So by conference, you're talking about you with the whole class, not like you, yeah. you specific. I gotcha. Because that's, okay. you know... Well, I was thinking conference in my head. I was thinking you directly talking with the teacher. I was like, the teachers aren't going to have time to do that with right. like the 60 or 80 students that they all yeah, have to but, deal with. If you just create, if you just do it like the normal school schedule and you had, you know, an actual, like, video conferencing thing to do with everybody, I think that would be better than what they're doing now because some teachers, like, weren't able to really put it together. I mean, some got better as the year went on and there were some conferences, but, like, 
you know, eventually, since you're not talking to the kids all the time, it's kind of hard to, you know, give them work and then lecture, which I can understand. And the lectures, like, one teacher, one of his lectures was just going over projects because, you know, he just sent out a project for people to do and uh, that was going to be his whole lesson. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah. And then you also have the problem of people not being able to access the internet and the problem of people just not showing up, too. Right. So, it it's going to be tough if you have to go back next semester. I hope that, you know, we can just go back to physical school in some sort of way because it's better than school at home uh, in every... Like, it's going to be better than school at home pretty much no matter what. Right. Well, I think we'll find out in the next uh, couple of weeks what's yeah. really going to happen with everything that's been going on. If the cases continue to go down, I think mm -hmm. you'll, you guys will be able to do school. The, uh, today, or I don't know if it was today or late yesterday, when I checked my phone this morning, um, Cuomo said that uh, sports are okay. some sports are okay to start back up in right. July. I think what we're going to see with coronavirus is, you know, people are already growing tired of it. And in the summertime, you know, anything that's open is going to get blasted. So, you know, the numbers are going to go up and there's going to be huge house parties. But there's no way to bring it down because it's summer and people are getting tired of it. So they're going to be forced to open it up. And I think, honestly, we kind of failed the, in the coronavirus because we still haven't learned a whole ton about it. All right. So magic wand, what should we have done? Did you go back in time and change anything you needed to do? Uh, I, if anything, I probably would have tried, I would have wanted the coronavirus task force to become expanded into, you know, really start researching the virus. So instead of all this panic and, you know, them constantly working to reassure us, I wish it just got expanded and, you know, we set a team of researchers and stuff to research what's going on in the country and we saw more of that instead of what we saw every day in the news, which was panic and, you know, reassuring and then people coming, going back on their word about reassuring. So I really just wish we kind of knew more about the virus before we opened up. But now that we're opened up, we're also not doing that well. So, you know... I wish we could have opened up normally, and I wish, like, now that we've opened up, that we could speed it up, but I don't, I didn't think we were ready to open up because we just didn't know enough about the virus yet, because the more we know, the easier it will be to combat in the future, and then we can open up, and we can set our precautions, you know, from there, and just live with it, and I think that's kind of what my view is now, but, I mean, my view's constantly been changing ever since it started, if I'm being truly honest. Yeah, uh, you get a lot of uh, different opinions since me and my mom, uh, me and your mom have a lot of different opinions on it. Um, I was just trying to look up to see how many people were actually really working on uh, the coronavirus. I can't really come up to it. Mm -hmm. There's just so much stuff going on with coronavirus, and I probably should. I'm probably, we didn't have any prep at all because we just yeah. sat down and talked. But I would say there's more people working on coronavirus than anything else in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's why everything keeps changing, because there's so many different groups coming up with so many different right. research topics. I think, though, it would have been nice if we we were told, like, the r results... If we were told the results of the research and, like, the public was informed about it, and we were able to, you know, create create precautions with what we know instead of, you know, the phases coming up. Instead of, you know, kind of politicians now taking over, um, you know, Dr. Fauci said, hey, let's, I don't think schools are, I'm paraphrasing here, obviously, but Dr. Fauci was like, I don't think schools are going to open like a couple months ago. And, you know, President Trump just said, that's not acceptable. So I think that, you know. Well, all the um, models that they came up with were completely wrong, so. Right, but it's better. I think it, I would prefer where safe rather than sorry and um you know it's worse it's better to think you know the worst is going to happen to think the best case scenario so we are prepared um i think with hindsight of you know what's happened i think we should have i think you know the phases and stuff should have been more involved with science and what research we've done and you know i think it's a brand new virus and i think they did keep us uh as much informed as it could, I think the what was going on kept changing, mm -hmm. and then when everything keeps changing, then eventually you have to just you know we have to move on with life because yeah. things are going to stop. There's shortages. People don't have work. The problem was nobody was really listening to science. I don't think. 
I think a lot of people were, all right, you I know, think, that's bad, but then... I think know. people listen to science, and what they said didn't come true, so people are like, uh, I don't know. Right. But you can't, like, they're trying to predict the worst so we're prepared for anything, and that's, I think... Right, and, like, so that's not a problem. So, like, right. the initial shutdown was good, but now that there's not, you know, not as many people are dying. And, and also, with hindsight, now that we're opening up, well, I've always thought this... Now that we're opening up, even if we're not technically ready to open up, I wish we could just open up quicker. Because if you're dedicated to opening up, uh, it should be moving fast. And it feels like it's taking forever to just get to, you know, normal life, but with social distancing and, you know, face protection for the next few months. Right, and it's so different depending on where you go. Mm -hmm. I got kicked out of the first door for no face mask. Ever. I usually, uh, like at 7-Eleven, mm -hmm. uh, when I went and... I did that private real quick. I didn't uh, have face masks. It makes sense though, because people people don't. The person behind me came in without face masks and kicked them out. Right, but <laughs> it's hard. It's it's hard because you 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 don't want to trust somebody. It's hard to trust somebody without a mask because yeah. there's two there's two sides right now. Because right now everybody thinks that. You know, there's two sides. Everybody thinks there's these two extreme sides where, you know, there are people that are, you know, covering up in a hole and are super afraid. And then people who are going buck wild and just have no, you know, just don't think anything of the virus. But, like, I think most people are kind of conflicted about it because of, you know, what's been going on. And we've never really gotten a straight answer about, you know, what the virus really is and... Um, you know, what's really going on. And instead, we've just gotten a bunch of muddled answers that contradict each other from medical professionals to medical professionals and politicians to medical professionals. So now we're just kind of stuck in limbo. Yeah, it's tough because like, this discussion is going to be boring to a lot of the people listening unless they're like kids your age because when we were your age, we thought that adults knew all the answers, like that someone knew something. But the, the, real, the real answer is nobody knows what's going on. Right? Right. That's why there's no real answers. Like right. there's nobody, everyone that's a scientist feels just like you right now. I was like, oh, I wish I knew this. But I mean, right. <clears throat> I always thought when I was a kid, when I grew up, like I'd be a grown up and I'd know how to do everything. And like, it was just some magic switch and I was able to do whatever I needed to do. And there's like smart people everywhere. And then the older you get, the, realize, the more you realize that people, there is nobody like that. People are just either faking or they're going with their best idea. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's how the world's working. Yeah. And like, that's why when you see the coronavirus, like younger people have a completely different opinion than older people because you guys still think that the guys that are telling you what's going on, they really know what they're doing. I mean, they have a better idea than, like, the politician. I'm not saying, like, discount the scientists, but mm -hmm. it's just their best guess. It's not the, right. the absolute truth, and that's why it keeps changing. Yeah. It really shows the difference in attitudes, I think. But also, I kind of wanted to ask you, did you hear about the Plandemic documentary? The Plandemic? Yeah. They, they did a whole documentary with this crazy scientist lady. And she basically said, like, Fauci and stuff was doing it for money and everything. Mm -hmm. And then there was this physical therapist who, you know, they kind of, they didn't directly say he was a medical professional, but, you know, he is acting like he was a medical professional and not just, like, a chiropractor. And I think that's a huge example of, you know, what happened with coronavirus, because you have a bunch of people who have no idea what they're talking about saying a bunch of stuff. You have people with some idea of what they're talking about, and you have some people who are saying stuff to who also have a decent idea of what's, who have more of an idea of what's going on, but are also trying to please the public. So, like, there are so many contradicting messages, and some people that are blatantly wrong, some people that are kind of wrong, and some people that are kind of right. And it all matches together into just, you know, everybody going crazy inside their houses because they're so sick of coronavirus. Yeah, people are basically done with it, and they're just doing whatever they need to do to kind of live their normal life. But going back to originally what happened, it's just... Like, mm -hmm. all the countries don't communicate well with each other either. So, no. like, every country is going to come up with different stuff. And it's just such a hard thing to find out. That's why there was no real answers. And coronavirus was in China, like, long before it came anywhere else. Like, China kind of knew about it, and that was a huge problem. And then, you know, I don't really want to get into politics, but 
basically President Trump started like calling, you know, started being a little anti-China. And then, you know, people were taking stuff out of context. Like, you know, I'm, I'm Asian American and I wasn't really offended by what he said because I knew the message behind it. But then it's from China. Yeah, and that became a huge deal because everybody thought, you know, Donald Trump was being racist Donald Trump, but, you know, really, in that case, he was just kind of blaming China for not giving the U.S. the information they needed, so... I think the problem with Donald Trump is, no matter what he says, is... It's always taken out of context. No, not only just that, he's just not, um, he's not a polished politician. No. You know, so whatever he says is going to be like that old boy network kind of... Yeah. Um, speech that everyone hates mm -hmm. uh, like either like it or you hate it and he's very decisive like you either like him or you hate him yeah so he's like no matter what his policies are the way he says it is gonna ignite mm -hmm. debate yeah and that's uh, some of the problem as well yeah all right let's get off of uh coronavirus because i'm sure no one wants to listen to 15 minutes of coronavirus talk yeah three months into the coronavirus uh, what do you think about our YouTube stuff? Um, well, here's the thing. I really wish we had a big budget, and I really wish <laughs> we could do, like, everything, you know, that we could do. Problem is, you know, this is, well, subscribe, because if you do subscribe, we'll get better stuff. But, you know, without a thousand subscribers, you can't even make money on YouTube. And if you're a subscriber and you've ever checked the subscriber count, yes, we do have under a thousand subscribers. And... I really wish we could make money off of this stuff because I kind of like, you know, what we're doing. I, I think it's cool and I think, you know, we could do things even better. And, you know, you always have this vision of how you can do things so amazingly, but, you know, in our case, we just can't do it. We can still do that stuff. Uh, we right. can get beyond uh, martial arts stuff, too, if you want. Mm -hmm. So, problem is, though, we just, we don't have the budget and we don't have the clout. Like, we don't need clout if we make good stuff, people will watch it. Right. The problem is, we don't have the budget to have good quality, which gets views. And we don't have the popularity and, you know, the clout to get guests that are currently in the news. Like, you've had legends on, you have, you've had UFC legends on, but, like, nobody's really talking about that. Most people are, you know, talking about, you know, what's going on today. People are talking about... You know, John Jones and Conor McGregor and that whole ordeal with Jorge Masvidal and asking for money where, you know, will Khabib continue his reign over the 155 division? So, I think I'm just getting too ahead of myself. Well, we can make funny skits. We can do interviews. Correct. You could make a broad call out to see who we can get on the show with father-son fireside chat. That was a good idea that you had. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like what we're doing. It's just... I would do things differently, and I think, you know, we need more use of other social medias and stuff, but it's just like, I don't really, you know, want to, you know, turn this into a job, like, not a real life job, but I don't want to, like, work on this like it's my life, I kind of just want to, you know, give you pointers and stuff, and not have to take a super serious role, but to do the things that I want to do, I would have to take a serious role, and that, you know, that's just not kind of where I want to be. I would rather focus on other things and other goals that I have for myself rather than for K-Man's Corner. That's what I have to do for K-Man's Corner. It's for us. It's like our thing. Yeah. But it sounds like a lot of stuff that you do in life. You're like, ah, I like to be in charge, but I don't really like to do work. Yeah, that's another problem with me. It's like everything that I do kind of contradicts itself because I want to do, I want to do so much stuff and then I don't actually want to do the stuff that I need to do to get to what I want. So that's a big problem with just me in general and something that I need to work on. But it's, it's kind of hard to work on because like... It's not. Well, yeah, it's not. But also it's, it's this big mental block that I always have. And I don't know, I think it's pretty hard to get rid of your mental blocks because they're your mental blocks. And for me, it's kind of always been that way. You know what makes a mental block a mental block? What? You're what you're thinking about, so just stop right. thinking and do something. Do something you like to do. What but I don't. I don't do things without thinking. That's what's one thing you want to do. I don't know. I want to start writing. Maybe that's easy. Just sit down and write. Type. Right. Take half hour and type. 
but I don't turn off YouTube. Yeah. Try for a half hour. But I don't. I don't do things that way. It's just not how. It but works. that's how you gotta do things to get them done. Like right, but for what? I think too much about what I'm gonna do. I overthink everything I want to do, and that creates the mental block where I'm like, I want to do this, but I want to do it so right, and I can't do the work. So writing's simple, right? So listen to this. Writing's easy because you don't have to show anyone until you're done with it. So if you write a bunch of bullshit, you can type for like 30 minutes of bullshit and take one sentence out of that whole thing. And then you have one sentence for the day. You spend 30 minutes, you type like six paragraphs, one sentence is good, you keep one sentence. And that's how things get done, a little bit at a time. Like you're never, you can't like start and be the best mountain climber in the world. Like. You can buy all the equipment, but it doesn't mean you can climb up the mountain. You gotta practice, right? So you gotta go to the rock wall and practice rock climbing. You saw how hard it was to rock climb once you're rock climbing wall, right? It's not that simple. So like, I give you the best gear in the world, you're not gonna climb Mount Everest. But if you train every day, you get the good stuff, and then you can do it. And you have a lot of talent, and you have a lot of ability, and you don't have a lot of focus, right? But you're 13. A lot of people don't have focus at 13. As you're getting older, this is one that's going to be more and more important that you're able to get things accomplished, right? You did a lot better. We started school. It wasn't going so good. You fixed it up, right? It's the same thing. You got a booger in your nose. You probably want to fix that because you're on film now. I'll go fix it real quick. All right. Forrest is going to fix his booger, so I'm going to continue to talk about nothing right now. Um, the bathroom is right next door, so it shouldn't take too long for Forrest to wipe his booger off. Um, how are you guys doing today? I hope you are enjoying our podcast. I will maybe cut some of this out. I don't know if I'll cut it all out, though, because the booger part's kind of funny. <laughs> all right, we're back. Yay, Forrest is back. Yeah, so, I don't know. I just think I have a lot to... I think I can become something, you know, really good. I just need to... You're already something really good. Yeah, I like, just so there's no. I can be something, you know. I know. I know that I can be become something like super good, but I don't know. I think I'm just kind of wasting away all the super good stuff by not becoming a better person, becoming a more accountable person. So I need to work on that before I can put things to use in the way that would make me so amazing. Right, and here's the problem with grown-ups. They're like, buckle up your shoes, your your chin strap, get out there and get it done, right? Mm -hmm. But they didn't do that either. They learned how to do it. Um, you had a lot softer childhood than I did growing up. You know, I got told to do stuff, and by the time I was your age, I was already responsible for a lot more things than you. You had more privileges. You were a little bit less responsible now, but that's okay. It just means it's going to take you longer to develop. Yeah. So it's time to start developing, you know? Like... The summertime, we're gonna have expectations, and we expect them done. And you yeah. do a great job. When it's just me and you, um, you do really well. So when it's me, you, and your mom, I don't know. Sometimes it all gets a little, a little frayed, and you uh, you play us off each other a little bit, and you do a good job getting away with a little bit more than when it's just <laughs> the one, one or other of us, you know. Yeah. But um, we love you, and you're gonna be great, man. Mm -hmm. You just gotta apply yourself and one step at a time. You don't get to be super organized overnight. Yeah. You know, one thing at a time. You gotta discover how you get better at it. But until you start trying all the time, it's not gonna be there. Right. I don't know. I think I can. I know I can do it. It's just a matter of working on it. Right. So stop saying that and yeah, no. start working on it. <laughs> it's just that. Uh, I think for me, I have a, sometimes it's really easy for me to believe in myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's going to sound great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so sometimes I have a really easy, I have a really easy time believing in myself when I'm not doing it. And then when I do it, <laughs> it comes to a point where I just, I just, I just kind of stop. Or, I don't stop, but I have a bit of a harder time. Right. And then, you know, I, I see how frustrated you get with things and how emotional you get, and that's okay. Like, that's what drives you. You're a very emotional person, 
And then you can take that emotion, you can drive it. The frustration and the anger, I know it, it makes it so difficult to work on it. As you get older and your hormones level out a little bit, because a lot of this is hormonal right now, it's going to be even easier for you to do this stuff, okay? But we need to start developing techniques for you to do, deal with it. Sorry about the mic. <laughs> That's okay. The sure our sisters are having a great time. Yeah. Well, probably like eight people are still listening. So you're okay. <laughs> And they all like you, so it's no big deal. But I mean, I mean, anything I was good at, uh, even jujitsu or like fighting, I never thought I was gonna be that good at it. And I always have doubts. We all have doubts. Every person you know has doubts. And then um, the more you let that win, the harder it is to get going. So if you spend now until you're 25 not believing not starting to do things you want to do it's going to be very difficult for you okay mm -hmm. so we don't have to keep talking about this so we don't get so emotional in there <laughs> but when you get off there we'll come up with one thing they want to do and we'll start working on it all right mm -hmm. okay <laughs> Alright, this is supposed to be the laughing part, and we're over 30 minutes, so I'm going to have to edit the uh, phone a little bit, too. But, um, I love you, man. Yeah. I'm glad we're doing this talk. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I wasn't going to try and get you to cry today, but it's probably good for viewership. I'm sure. Your emotionalness is good for viewership. If they can get past the 15 minutes of Corona BS. Yeah. Oh. I think it, yeah. I think we had a good talk, but I think we should probably end on something a little bit better. Just have a quick topic to round out the podcast. All right, Agents of Shield. What do you think about this season? It's, it's I like it. It's a little strange, but I I like it. It's a good send off for them, man. I like it because they can't really do anything with the Marvel movies because they're not connected. I think it looks awesome this year that they're going back in the past. If you don't know Agents of Shield, mm -hmm. it's uh, Phil Coulson from the Avengers. And he has a team of... Also, spoilers if you're waiting for it to come out on Netflix or halfway through or something. Yeah, we're just talking about the current season. But anyways, he's in charge of... Uh, they're basically just the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. Uh, a couple of them have powers, but not too many. And they're loosely connected to the Marvel Universe, but not really. Besides for Phil Coulson. And it's a pretty good show. Season 2 and 3 are a little bit rough, but we're in Season 7 now. And I really like it. But anyways, they're back in time now. So now we're going to get into spoiler alerts. Mm -hmm. And uh, Coulson's a robot. And we found out the original... Uh, what's the guy's name? The comedian? Oh, the... The fat guy. The short fat guy. Yeah, the short fat guy. Is Not the fat shame, but he's fat. I mean, he, he, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is an adjective we use. But, uh, yeah, he's the original... Founder of Shield, kind of. Yeah, he's cool. I like that guy. He's funny. I don't remember his actual. I, well, I don't know his celebrity name, and I don't remember his uh, no. series name. But uh, May's in it. May. May's become emotionless. Yeah, she's like some kind of killer robot right now. Uh, Quake is awesome. She tried to kill. Uh, she tried to kill the Hydra, a big Hydra head. The guy that found a Hydra. Mhm. Mm well, it's not found behind her. Yeah, but the problem with killing him is that then S.H.I.E.L.D. will never be formed. So then they jumped ahead into the 50s, uh -huh. and they pretend to be Agent Peggy Carter, but the guy from that Peggy Carter series is on there. And I hope yeah. next week Peggy Carter actually makes sound. That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. That was I, a really good show, too. I like, uh, I like what they're doing now, because going in the past, because Coulson, like, well, Robot Coulson has everything. Col normal Coulson has. <laughs> But um, basically, like he's a nerd and he like he likes history a lot. So I think uh, I I like it because it's a cool way to show off Coulson's um, knowledge of history. Yeah, and like he met FDR mm -hmm. when he was a governor. And that was pretty cool. He was pretty stoked about that. We also we've also delved into a little bit about racism and stuff. It's a it's a very uh, interestingly timed. Yeah, episode. it was a very interesting time. Last week's episode mm -hmm. to talk about racism, mm -hmm. and uh, it was very interesting. They've been talking about racism because, you know, it was racism has existed. Well, there was a lot of racism in the times that they've been in, like the, mm -hmm. the 
fifties and no, forties and fifties, right? Thirties and fifties. Yeah, the thirties and fifties. Not great times for you know people of color. <laughs> people of anywhere except for uh, Anglo-Saxon and white. <laughs> Alright, uh, with that, we're gonna be out of here. Yeah. Sorry I made you cry. Sorry I sniffled in, uh, in the mic and made everybody's day horrible. I'm gonna point that book out with an arrow when I do this thing. Rude. How rude. Ding! I'll put, I got the ding sound still, too. Good. Alright, I'll put a, a, a advisory in there. Parental warning or something. <laughs> Why parental advisory? Yeah, a booger's coming out. <laughs> I rated uh rated B for booger. <laughs> uh, a brief booger appearance. All right, man. I love you. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Let's stop this thing. Yeah, we're out. Bye. Yeah, if you want, you want to write, we can write together. Yeah, I got.